This is the ROG Zephyrus M16, one of Asus fastest gaming laptops on the market. Now, the way how I look at this laptop is essentially the Zephyrus G15 running Intel's all the lake CPUs and a 16 by 10 display. So why would someone consider this over the G15 that's slightly cheaper? Honestly, I'm actually having a bit of trouble coming up with an answer since Asus is technically competing within themselves. But either way, Black Friday is right around the corner and if you're looking to pick up a gaming laptop and if the M16 is on your list, here's everything that you need to know. And the first thing that stood out to me was the display. This is probably one of the reasons why you should consider the M16 because it is big, beautiful, and bright. To expand that on a little bit, you're greeted with a 16 inch, 16 by 10 quad HD plus display with a refresh rate of 165 Hertz and gaming on it is so much fun, guys. What surprised me the most with this panel is its incredible color output and contrast. I would pick this over an OLED panel all day, any day. And if you don't believe me, well, check out the color gamut reading from my Spider-X. It covers 100% sRGB, 86% Adobe RGB, and 98% P3. That's equivalent to my M1 MacBook Pro, plus, it's faster. Now, if you're wondering about brightness levels, I've got good news for you as well, because our sample was able to sustain a peak brightness level of around 470 nits. So there are no issues viewing content outdoors. And I wanna say it again, it is one of the best displays that you can find on a gaming laptop. But it does come at a cost. You see, the base model starts at 1650 US dollars, and it comes with an i7 12700H with 16 gigs of DDR5 memory, half terabyte storage, and an RTX 3060, and a 1200p 165Hz display. Now to get the Quad HD spec, you'll need to spend an extra $500, but that also gives you a Core i9 CPU and an RTX 3070 Ti. Again, not cheap by any stretch of the imagination, but if I were to compare this to something like the Blade 15 with similar specs, it's $1,250 cheaper. Yeah, you heard that right more than $1,000 cheaper. So the M16 is looking like a bargain. By the way, this is the sample that I have over here. And if we bring the G15 into the equation with a Ryzen 9 CPU, the M16 costs $150 more, which isn't too bad. So I hope I was able to paint a clear picture in terms of where this laptop stands in the market. The design is pretty simple on the outside. Asus has given it a stealth approach with this matte black color theme across the chassis, and it does an okay job resisting fingerprints. I love this clean and minimal look. It is made out of magnesium alloy and aluminum in order to keep it fairly lightweight. We're talking around 4.4 pounds or two kilos, which feels similar to the Blade 15. However, it is noticeably lighter than the Legion 5i Pro. I should also mention that the Z height is 0.78 inches or 19.9 millimeters, which is about an inch thicker than the Blade. The hinge does exhibit a little bit of wobble, but it is smooth to open with just one hand, so that's great. And uh, it actually shifts the keyboard or tilts the keyboard at an angle to optimize um, the typing experience. And of course, it also benefits airflow. The power adapter is not too big and you can easily toss this in your backpack. It is rated for 240 watts and it uses a barrel style connector to charge the battery. And the cable is super long, which I'm sure students would appreciate. Uh, just like how I appreciate you guys taking this time to check out today's video sponsor. A lot of you might not know this, but it takes a lot of time to piece together a review video or even an explain series. One of our main sources of acquiring digital assets for our videos has been through Storyblocks. They have access to a bunch of stock footage, vector files, and music tracks that enable us to give more life to our content. If you're looking for a hassle-free experience, uh, they've got a plan that works for your budget with unlimited downloads, royalty-free content, and most importantly, diversity. If you want to learn more, click the link down below. All right, so let's take a look at the interior space. And what can I say? It's pretty similar to the rest of ROG's gaming laptops. There are four dedicated keys at the top for instant access to Armory Crate, Mic Mute, and Volume Adjust. I did wish if the power button functioned as a fingerprint reader, but uh, I guess that only comes with the G15, which is really odd. Uh, the keys themselves provide enough travel and feedback and they don't require a ton of pressure to actuate. It's great for writing out emails and gaming. They also feature one zone RGB lighting and you can cycle between different effects through Armory Crate. I did wish if they implemented multi-zone RGB customization or per key RGB lighting because for a laptop at this price point, you know, it just would have been a nice feature that uh, gamers would have appreciated, like myself. I don't hate RGB, I actually like it. And this is what the webcam looks like on the ROG M16. Now, the quality is not the greatest because they are using a 720p sensor, so not up to standards compared to 1080p sensors that are already available in the market right now. Uh, so the detail's not that great. Also, the exposure is kind of finicky. It does tend to overexpose and underexpose a lot of the time, so it's not consistent, so that's something to keep note of. 
But I will say that the microphone quality is really good. Asus has some crazy AI noise cancellation techniques built into the M16, and they're one of the best out there. Uh, you can actually fine-tune and choose between different modes, like omnidirectional, cardio, and stereo mode to pick up different vocals. Um, so that's great. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. The built-in speakers sound really good, guys. There are two tweeters at the front for better audio projection, and you've got a couple of woofers at the bottom to enrich the bass response. I'll tell you, it's a noticeable difference compared to traditional bottom-facing drivers. Uh, so if you like to watch a lot of movies or listen to music, uh, this will get the job done pretty well. They've also loaded the M16 with ports. So starting on the left-hand side, uh, you have power in, HDMI 2.0, an RJ45 jack, USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port, a Thunderbolt 4 Type-C port, and another Type-C 3.2 Gen 2 port that also functions as DisplayPort pass-through and uh, PD. Uh, and of course, there's an audio jack. And if you switch over to the right-hand side, you get a Kensington lock, a USB Type-A port, and a micro, micro SD card reader. Seriously, Asus, a micro SD card reader? I mean, you, you guys have the space for a full-size SD card reader, and I'm pretty sure the M16 will appeal to a lot of content creators as well, so this inclusion is a bit of a letdown. All right, so getting underneath the M16 is pretty straightforward, and once you do, you do have a single memory slot, SODIMM slot, because half of it is actually soldered onto the PCB, which is eight gigabytes, and so the maximum support of memory is 40 gigabytes, so keep that in mind. Uh, the primary NVMe SSD is right over here. And the drive speeds are, they're pretty good, but they're not as fast as some of the ones that are on the Blade 15 and the 5i Pro. So keep that in mind. Um, there is an extra M.2 slot for storage expansion. And so yeah, overall, pretty easy to work on. Cooling system does look pretty robust, but we'll wait and see how temperatures are later in the video. ASUS is also packed in a 90 watt hour battery. And from our light load test, it's pretty evident that Intel still has a long way to go in terms of fine tuning its 12th gen efficiency. AMD's secret sauce with the Ryzen CPUs is working really well. Now in this case, the M16 still manages to deliver decent numbers. Nothing groundbreaking though. Under heavier load, the M16 has one of the longest runs we've seen on a gaming laptop, let alone something that runs its Core i9 CPU close to 90 watts. Now I'm gonna give most of the credit to the larger battery inside the chassis here. Switching over to how the M16 handles power, uh, there are three modes, silent, performance, and turbo. Each one of them runs the Core i9 CPU at different power levels, with silent only chugging down 50 watts, which is one of the lowest we've seen on a gaming laptop of this caliber. But hey, temperatures are under control. But switch things over to turbo and things get to a whole new level with power exceeding over 110 watts while clock speeds stay close to four gigahertz. The downside is of course the higher temperatures. I think performance is the happy medium here. Switching gears to the GPU side, the RTX 3070 Ti sucks back a crazy amount of juice and it also gets super loud, at least in turbo mode. Meanwhile, performance and silent behave just as expected considering the amount of power it consumes and it's much quieter as well. But please, please avoid gaming in silent mode because performance gets kneecapped big time. Now, typically you'd expect these hotter running components would lead to increased surface temperatures, but Asus has things pretty well managed, guys, even with the power hungry Core i9 CPU and an RTX 3070 Ti. The keyboard's primary typing and gaming areas get slightly warm to the touch, but it doesn't get really, really hot. Most of the excess heat is actually pushed to the sides I wouldn't game with this thing on my lap though, since the bottom does get a little bit toasty. Now I know there's been some concern with what those rear exhaust vents mean for the display, and at least in performance mode, there isn't any concern from our standpoint. Even though um, there's a smaller chin, most of the heat is directed a bit lower. So with that out of the way, let's shift gears to how the M16 behaves in real world applications. Now full disclaimer, we did run these tests in performance mode since the noise output was within our 50 decibel cap. Single core performance is very strong on this laptop, and I expected that considering this is a Core i9 processor which has higher single core performance than something like an i7. However, when you transition into multi-core workloads, performance is right about where you would expect. In apps where the CPU can stretch its legs a bit more because of its higher power limit, it's amazing. At other times, it doesn't do as well, especially against the Helios 300, and that's likely due to the way each individual CPU handles power in different applications. The M16 is still pretty fast, but maybe I was expecting a bit more. But I will say that this laptop is far ahead of the Blade 15, which costs $1,000 more. For content creation, this thing gets the job done pretty well, and keep in mind that Resolve relies heavily on the GPU, and the amount of power being fed to the 3070 Ti 
isn't quite enough for the M16 to stand out. What about gaming? Well, don't expect too much from the RTX 3070 Ti running along at 90 watts. I just feel like there's a lot of performance left on the table since it feels like Asus could have pumped more power onto the GPU because there seems to be plenty of thermal headroom. Now, technically, you can gain a few extra frames per second if you decide to switch to turbo mode, but it still won't be enough to compete with the SCAR 17 and even the Helios 300. I mean, look at what 140 watts does to a laptop. It's scary fast, guys. But remember, neither of those have the greatest build quality and they're both a lot bigger and heavier. 1440p results mirror the same output as 1080p. I mean, you can clearly see how hard the RTX 3070 Ti is flexing its muscles. This is why it's really important to pay attention to how much power a laptop manufacturer supplies to the GPU because that's been the story ever since the RTX 3000 series hit the laptop market. You could turn down a few settings at this resolution to bump up the frame rates, but if you can't compromise, I'll say it again, the Helios 300 will bring a smile to your face. So here's the deal with the ROG Zephyrus M16. I think Asus has delivered a balanced gaming laptop. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, first off, build quality is good. The design is clean and simple. It doesn't weigh too much and it's not too enormous uh, compared to the Legion 5i Pro, the SCAR 17, or even the Helios 300. Not to mention, the keyboard and trackpad are a lot better than those laptops and the display is simply put, gorgeous. Now, if you look at the performance side, sure, it doesn't put out the highest frame rates because of the way how Asus has handled the M16's power management. But I think they had to find a happy medium between power and performance, since battery life is actually pretty good on this laptop, at least when you compare it to the Legion 5i Pro and the Helios 300, uh, both of which are priced similarly compared to this with the same specs. So on that note, Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're able to take away everything that you needed to know about the Zephyrus RG or RG Zephyrus M16. Let us know what you guys think about this laptop in the comments. And if you are shopping around for a new gaming laptop in the holiday season, would this be on the top of your list? Oh, and spend responsibly. <laughs>